We are talking today books and authors and the crisis in the publishing industry. Last month at the Edinburgh International Book Festival, uh, the well-known Scottish writer and filmmaker Ewan Morrison made an incredibly provocative speech about the death of books and the death of the author. Uh, Ewan Morrison, welcome to TechCrunch TV. Thank you, Andrew. So, Ewan, what's going on? Are the book, is the book, and are authors really dead? Well, they're not getting there yet, but they've just, uh, they've just launched themselves into the digital world. And uh, I was quite surprised to find over the last year and a half just the kind of impact that the changes that going digital has had on publishing. Uh, most of all, I think, is, is what I think people call the digital squeeze that Amazon has been putting on, on um, publishing houses. This has been going on for about 10 years, but we're really, we're really seeing it now because, um, because publishers are, are cutting back on marketing and they're cutting back on author advances. And uh, when you cut back on author advances, you're really depriving authors of uh, a way of making a livelihood. Um, I mean, yes, there have been huge changes in the way that uh, books are, are made and can be distributed. You can write a book and, and get it up online uh, in about an hour, or rather you can get it online in an hour. It still takes a year to write the damn thing, though. So one of the problems is if you get rid of authors' advances, um, then basically, as a publishing house, you're banking on two things, which is your existing backlist and the possibility of somehow discovering brand new talent out of nowhere. And, and really throughout the 20th century, what we've seen is, is uh, the mid-list writers, if you like, the ones that, that, uh, that aren't necessarily hugely successful immediately. These are like the research and development department of a publishing house. And if you, if you get rid of those guys, then, then really there's no way of getting your, 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 your quality literary material. I'm thinking of some writers here who were mid-listers. You might have heard a few of them. Uh, a guy called Don DeLillo wrote five books that no one had really heard of, but he was sustained by a publishing house uh, throughout that time. Another guy called Philip Roth, uh, you know, as well. So I think publishers are shooting themselves in the foot by uh, cutting costs because of digital pressure. But are, are you, and you brought up Amazon at the beginning of this conversation, are you saying this is all Amazon's fault? Is it the publisher's fault? Is it the internet's fault? Is it the consumer's fault? Oh, it's, well, I, I, I would point the finger at, at, three, at three different targets here, which would be Google, Amazon, and the consumer. Uh, let's just start with the consumer. There's a general sort of ethos uh, as part of the digital revolution that, that, that we should be getting culture for free, as, as Chris Anderson says. You know, I, I was very taken and shocked by, uh, you know, by his, 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 uh, his manifest. Although Chris was paid, I think, $500,000 for his book on free. Well, there you go. Well, that's a sizable advance, and I believe it still retails at a price above free. Um, you know, but I, I'm kind of, um, here's where Amazon comes into this, because um, I've recently noticed that a lot of writers in my country have started self And your country is, of course, Scotland, right? Not Scotland, yes, but well, largely in the UK as well. But um, that's your country. Well, it's, it's not really. I'm a Scottish nationalist personally. <laughs> and, you know, I'll <clears throat> I'll stand up for Scotland over England any day. But um, I was quite surprised to find how quickly writers have been taking to the whole Amazon Kindle self-publishing thing, um, because the advances are being slashed. Writers are thinking, well, to hell with it. I'll just dump the publishers and I'll get seventy percent royalties. Uh, sorry. Um, Yes, uh, royalties um, from, from Amazon. Uh, but what happens then, and what I've seen even in the last week, is three novelists who used to retail at around £10 are now self-publishing at £2 and at 99 pence. And uh, the market's pretty quickly getting clogged up with extremely cheap and somewhat desperate writers who are, who are struggling in the long tail. Um, and this is something which, which Amazon is encouraging. Um, Amazon would quite like to put the publishing houses out of business and probably will do so because Amazon only ultimately, at the end of the day, makes 49% of its income from actually selling books. It sells everything from, you know, uh, you know inflatable beds to, to pencil sharpeners to, you know, to wheels. Um, and, and with that financial base that it's got, it can, it can easily put excessive pressure on the publishing houses to lower their costs. Already, it squeezes... The publishing houses but, but, but you and a lot of people, and I think quite a large part of our audience would argue that the publishers are not providing any value, so that, that 
the book that sells for £10 versus the book that sells for £2, where's the, the £8 difference? What is the value that the publisher is providing? Well, I think this is a very consumer-skewed attitude, um, really. We have to look at publishing houses in a different way and see them as kind of stables for talent. That's one thing publishing houses sometimes forget when they're talking um, about exactly how they operate. Basically, a publisher will take a risk on 10 authors and one of them will pay off. And this has been going on for about 50 years. So really, what you're getting is you're getting a, a stable of, of talent that the good work can, can come from. So they're like venture capitalists. They make a bet and one out of the 10 turns into a Delilo or a Philip Roth and they'll lose yeah. on most of the others. Well, or over you know, a 30 or 40 year period, uh, some of the, those others will also you know, come to fruition and they'll start winning the awards and, and raising the profile of the publisher. But really, we're seeing a paradigm shift where the publishers are kind of giving up on that just now. And a lot of it is to do with the fact that, that the consumer does want culture for nothing. And I think this is across the board. We've seen the damage that it's done in the music industry. I don't have to quote stats, but the music industry is, is half the size, I think, you know, that it was 10 years ago. We've seen vast cuts in, in, uh, in film funding. And, and really, you know, if you look at independent music, I remember being a Generation Xer, that we had a very thriving independent music scene. Now, you know, it's, uh, we're just getting the dregs of the mainstream. So what is the solution? Is it to re-educate the consumer? Is it to arrest them for stealing? Or perhaps arrest them for buying stuff that's too cheap? Well, it's, it's practically impossible to enforce these laws on piracy. Um, I would rather that, that uh, we, we had a good look at the business practices of Google, who own YouTube and Amazon, and actually start taxing them at source and making them, therefore, you know, have to police the content on the uh, sites that they provide in service. That would be a start. Um, other things, I think, you know, when you ask the consumer to just behave themselves, it's quite tough. You know, we're in a recession and everyone wants to get a, a discount deal on every single thing. It's the you know, Walmartification uh, of life, if you like. Um, so it's, it's not really fair to ask the consumer to do that. You know, I, I know very civilized middle class people who still nonetheless uh, weekly rip videos, you know, for their kids just to keep the kids quiet. It's just a standard practice. Um, what we might have to look at is, is for publishing to uh, move towards a model a bit like cable TV, where maybe a publishing house decides to um, provide, you know, 25 titles a year for, for, you know, for a finite amount and then redistributes money to writers. That's my main concern, really. I don't really give a damn about, you know, what the consumer... Uh, you know, is getting for 99 pounds. I'm more concerned about the, the uh, profession of writing. And if you destroy the economic base on which writers can survive, and if you destroy the, the funding for, for, for research, you know, whether you're a writer of fiction or non-fiction, look at the, uh, the impact on journalism recently uh, with, with uh, you know, 68% reduction in the last year. The New York Times readership in my country is about 20 to 27%. Now, the cuts are going to start happening in quality. You know, you know um, foreign correspondents are maybe not going to be able to do their own uh, research, so they'll just have to go from press releases from governments, you know? So we're seeing a real fall off in quality. That's, so you that's and finally, um, this might not be in your nature or in your national characteristic, but do we have any reason to be optimistic here? about the future of writing and the author? Can technology actually result in an ecosystem whereby uh, a young Delilo or a young Philip Roth will be able to realize uh, a living and, and, and to bring their wonderful art to readers? Or is that just impossible? That's, that's absolutely impossible and it's a, it's a contradiction in terms. Uh, I mean. Also, as a European, I look at the internet, and it's, it's, a, it's a model for extremely aggressive American-style capitalism. You know, in, in, uh, in France, for example, they have a thing called l'exception culturelle, which is basically a culture tax to preserve and save French cinema, French writing, um, even French cuisine. Is, you know, uh, Germany has a, a, a price-fixing uh, thing on books, which has made it nearly impossible for Kindle. To, uh, to start up in Germany, all because they value culture more than they value capital. And uh, so really, 
this whole question of the internet as being freeing, you know, I see it, uh, this use of the word free, very much the same way that I see the way Americans use free. You know, it's, it's not, America is not the land of the free, I'm afraid, it's the land of the free market. And uh, we're all suffering because of this kind of mentality.